Heart to Heart, a Catholic media ministry, presents Good News Today, featuring an inspiring gospel teaching by Father Jim Willing. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Again, Jesus left the district of Tyre and Sidon and went by way of Sidon to the Sea of Galilee into the district of the Decapolis. And people brought to him a deaf man who had a speech impediment and begged Jesus to lay his hand on him. Jesus took him off by himself away from the crowd. He put his fingers into the man's ears and spitting touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven and groaned and said to the man, Ephatha! That is, be open. And immediately, the man's ears were opened. His speech impediment was removed, and he spoke plainly. Jesus ordered them not to tell anyone. But the more he ordered them not to, the more they proclaimed it. They were exceedingly astonished, and they said, He has done all things well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. The Gospel of the Lord. One of the most common problems I hear is the problem of poor communication. Do you hear that too? Wherever you go, whether it be family circles or conflicts among friendships or situations in the workplace, we always run across these interpersonal tensions and difficulties that almost always find a root problem in poor communication. And it's not surprising once you study all the dynamics of communication, you realize all that goes into really hearing well. We all tend to turn a deaf ear sometimes to each other. There's so many examples. I, if I could quickly just cite a few. I'm reminded uh, I was with a couple the other day of a little baby, a little Joey, and they kept saying, Joey, it's time to go to bed. Joey, it's time to... Joey! And you swore the kids suffered from a lack of hearing, you know. Until their parents said, Joey, would you like a little treat before you go to bed? And all of a sudden, Joey was right there with them. Or the example of a teenager, many of you are familiar with, you keep saying... Clean up your room now or turn that stereo down. And you swear that loud music is making them tone deaf until the phone rings and they can hear wherever it is. Or take an example of ourselves. How we are preoccupied with so many things and somebody, especially close to us, and we live with or work with, talks to us and you can tell if you're talking to them that it's going in one ear and out the other because they just keep saying, uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Or I think of the senior citizens, many of whom, sadly, suffer some hearing loss. And yet, the amazing thing is, they end up hearing what they want to hear. <laughs> I live with such a kind priest who's retired now, we're at dinner conversation a lot, and he just doesn't hear half of our conversation. The pastor are saying something about some other priest, and I said, he did, and Father Carl says, he died? I said, no, he did. He did die? No, no, no. Forget it. Just forget it. It goes on like that. You've been there, I'm sure. And so I find I came up to him after dinner, and I thought it would be very kind and propose it gesture of consideration, I said, Carl, why don't you wear your hearing aid? And then he said, Jim, I like to only wear for important things. I said, I hear you. <laughs> Isn't that wild? But then again, is he any different than any of us? 
One of the most common problems in communication is what we've affectionately termed selective listening, where we unconsciously, mostly, choose not to hear certain things. And I bet every one of us could name a situation or person that we wish we could tell them something, but we know they just will not hear it. Amen? And, well, I hate to think of it, but we're that person too. And that's what we want to consider, that we all need a hearing aid. We all need a hearing aid that will help us hear really what we need to hear. This is what Jesus wants for his disciples in the gospel, as they have a hearing problem. All through the gospels, they can't quite hear what Jesus' message is. They have trouble hearing and understanding what he's trying to share with them. And today's gospel we hear the marvelous miracle of the man who is deaf. I like to say it that way. We don't want to describe a person by their disability. But a man who is deaf, not a deaf man. He's more than his deafness, huh? In fact, he's much more. He's a model for the disciples. He's the one whom the Lord singles out to reveal true, deep, inner healing of hearing to show the same kind of healing the disciples need to undergo. And of course, those disciples are us. We all need healing for our poor hearing. And Jesus wants to open us all up. And so we look to the Gospel to see what the Lord wants to do for us today. We're told, as you recall, some people brought the deaf man to Jesus, as it reads. Some people brought him a deaf man who had a speech impediment. You notice immediately, this man would maybe never have come to Jesus had he not had such good friends or family who, quote, spoke for him. Isn't that amazing? And think of the power we have to bring people to the Lord. We can have a tremendous influence if we bring people along to the Lord. This is something that should never be overlooked. This miracle would never have happened if he did not have such a good support group, such a good circle of friends. They brought him, led him to the Lord, and they spoke for him because he had a speech impediment. This is not surprising that he would have a speech impediment. You would know this, of course, If you can't hear well, that affects your speaking because we speak what we hear. That's why we have accents. Grow up in the South, you hear things said a certain way, y'all know what I mean. You speak that way. And so it's presumed that this man grew up with this impediment because from his earliest youth, if not from his birth, he could not hear. For whatever reason, he had this hearing loss, and therefore it affected his speaking. And the two, by the way, are very closely connected, not only biologically or anatomically, but I'll later suggest even spiritually. So notice that his friends or family bring him to the Lord and beg Jesus for his healing. The man cooperates. He goes to the Lord, and he stands there, in his brokenness and his neediness. The man's a sign of a great disciple who should be again that model for all of us who come before the Lord with our need. And what did Jesus do? Do you recall? The first thing he did was to take him off by himself away from the crowd. Now why did he do that? Jesus just doesn't do things He did this, I presume, because first of all, you have to picture this crowded area. Picture Findlay Market. Busy with people, swarming. In in the first century Palestine, people came to the public places. They lived in close proximity to everybody. It was a closed environment. They lived on top of each other. Everybody knew everybody's business. And so Jesus wanted to take the man away. Why? I think... So 
he could hear himself think. You know how we say we want to move away from distraction. He wanted to remove the man from the distraction of the crowd, the hustle, the bustle, the, the noise, in order to help him hear. So what will help us hear? We need to move away from the distractions, from the noise. What will help us hear? We need to turn the TV off and turn the radio off. What will help us hear? We need to find time for solitude and silence. What will help us hear? We need to move away to that place we could be alone with the Lord. And then we can pick up his gentle voice that speaks like words of silence in a whisper of wisdom of the Spirit. I've always believed that Jesus is such a gentle man. He speaks with that gentle voice. Gentle but powerful because his message is like a laser beam that strikes right to the heart. The light of truth. But to pick up that voice of the Lord, we have to put out those other distractions and those other noises. In any case, I think it's very significant that in order to predispose this man for healing, he moved him away from the busyness, the noise of the crowd. And he had that silent one-on-one time with the man Then what did he do, you recall? He put his finger in the man's ears. I imagine that Jesus first, with the one hand, would have laid his hand on his shoulder. You understand, in almost all of the healing stories, Jesus touches the person to be healed. Very important point. Of course, in those days of antiquity, it was believed that the laying on of hands or touching was the customary way of transmitting this therapeutic power. And you know, there is something to therapeutic touch. Jesus was always gentle, humble of heart, and he could very carefully, gently, you can imagine, laying his hand on them, and then gently touching, putting his finger in the ear. What does that mean? That's, that's rather bold, don't you think? What does that suggest? For me, it suggests something very, very important, what I've discovered when I'm with people and they get into their problem and you realize you cannot heal the wound until you get to the bottom of it. When you deeply get into what the situation is and you touch back at that memory that has haunted them or hurt them, or touch to that relationship that has troubled them, and they've got to get to the root of the source of it. Does this make sense? It suggests that Jesus is touching the inner ear to get to the inner healing of the inner wound. In any case, as he touches this man at the source of where he needs healing, Jesus then, we're told, takes some spittle, and with the spittle off his tongue, touches the tongue of this man. In our modern and antiseptic society, this is gross. It's utterly repulsive to imagine someone spitting. I think of a ball player, you know. But in Jesus' time, there was this feeling, it wasn't repulsive, there was this feeling of curative quality to that spittle, to that source of the thing that comes from deep within us. So what Jesus, interesting, was doing, taking the spittle from his tongue, then touching the tongue of this man, he was sharing his gift of freedom of speaking to loosen the tongue of this man. You see the close connection here, giving of himself and his gift to this man who had the speech impediment. In any case, isn't that what healing is doing? Simply sharing the gift given to us with another. And this is surely how the Lord wants to help us all. I believe what's happening here is Jesus is helping the man speak for himself and find his own inner voice. So many of us need not only healing of hearing one another, but of freeing, of sharing with one another. And the two go closely together. Love is a two-way street. In communication, it comes 
both listening and sharing. And one is hard for some group of people, and the other is harder for others. Some people are very good listeners, but have difficulty sharing what's deepest in them. And others have an easy time talking, but they never are very good at listening. And we have to balance that out. And so Jesus is healing one at the same time, holding them in balance. What I believe, if you enter into a deep love, you have to learn to listen. Think of two ears forming a perfect heart. Hearing is a way of loving. And yet speaking. If you truly want to love someone, you have to let yourself be known to be loved. To do that, I find it difficult to talk about the deepest down things. When Jesus healed the man, he looked up to heaven. It's something... What power is available to us if we look up to heaven? Jesus, by looking up to heaven, he didn't have to say anything. He just had to look to this father. He emitted a deep groan. It was the most powerful prayer. He allowed the painful feeling that he experienced wanting to help this poor man who suffered. You've been there with your friends and family when you hear them, really listen to them, See the grief they're dealing with, the hardship. And there's nothing we can do to take the pain or problem away. All we can do is empathize with them, really listen to them. And the worst thing to do is to almost insult them with a solution that's always almost too simplistic or paternalistic. You know what I'm saying? That's an insult. And we've all seen it done because it's been done to us. We come and talk to people... Oh, man, I've really hurt my knee. Oh, your knee. Let me tell you about my back. Oh, forget it. Forget I mentioned it. Or well, the guy came to the doctor and says, Doctor, my knee's really been bothering me. The doctor looks at him and says, Ah, I wouldn't worry about it. He says, Well, doctor, if it was your knee, I wouldn't worry about it either. <laughs> when Jesus emitted a deep groan, what he's telling us, he felt deeply for the man. That's empathy. It's far beyond sympathy. He felt the man's pain. And he didn't lecture him. He didn't preach to him. He just stood with him and prayed with him and looked up to heaven with him. This is healing in itself. As people will tell you, thank you. And when Jesus admitted that groan, I'm reminded of the passage, Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8. When he says, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for when we do not know how to pray as we ought, the Spirit himself makes intercessions for us with groaning that cannot be expressed in words. Isn't that something? With groaning. Isn't this the groaning of Christ? And then Jesus says, just one word, just one word. And that word is preserved in its original language, Aramaic. Did you know that's the first language of Jesus? That was the popular tongue that Jesus spoke, Aramaic. Now, Mark and all the evangelists wrote their Gospels in Greek, you might know. So why did he preserve this word in Aramaic? Except that it was so important, it had to be preserved. There's really only one or two others. Abba was also another word. He said, Ephata. Ephata. It's such a loaded word that it defies translation. You know, some words don't translate from one language quite to the other. Ephata. And it's with that intentional, painful, prayerful groaning, the man's tongue and ears were opened. Opened. But not only his tongue and his ears, his whole person, his mind, his eyes, he saw Jesus for who he was, healer, savior. He heard Jesus for what he was speaking, an invitation far greater than to hear the words of the world, but the word of the Lord. Opening even his heart to this miracle power that's now accessible to him. He opened the man's life to heaven. He opened the door to the kingdom of heaven. And the man's ears are now are a symbol of taking in the word of the Lord. The man's speech now was a symbol of sharing the word of the Lord. In fact, the word for when he was free to that impediment, he began to speak plainly. It's the same word in Greek used for proclaiming the gospel. Isn't that interesting? 
He was free now to be all that what the Lord wants us to be. See, that man is us. That man is us. The Lord wants to open our ears so that we could really hear the gospel message, the good news. God knows we hear so much bad news. And God knows what we take in affects us like a computer. You know, our minds work like a computer. What you program in gets read out. And so garbage in, garbage out is that familiar phrase. But good news in, good news out. And so we open our ears, our hearts, to take in the gospel so that we could go from here and have our tongue loose to share the good news with others too. And so and after that healing, we're told the man went to spread the good news. Although Jesus encouraged him not to. This is odd. It seems strange. Why would Jesus ask him not to say anything? Because you know, the more you tell people don't say anything, the more they're going to tell them. Scholars call this the messianic secret. Imagine that Jesus was not wanting sensational news. He didn't want the spotlight. He just wanted to share the Father's light. So how does Jesus give us, if you will, a hearing aid to help us hear better? Let me quickly offer my reflection. You might know that the act of hearing is actually a complicated process. We don't think about it ordinarily, but it involves three levels. There's the outer ear, obviously acts like a funnel, picking up sound waves and carrying it to the middle ear. The middle ear, I read, amplifies that sound it takes in from the outer ear. Then it vibrates three bones called a hammer, anvil, stirrup. Does this sound like an old science lesson? And these bones moving against each other will create waves that will then touch the inner ear. And there's this fluid in the inner ear that will then create this electrical current that then sends electrical impulses to the brain that then can make the translation of what these signals have conveyed. Isn't that, isn't that a miracle? I mean, it's wonderful to think about. I would propose that the very act of hearing, as complicated as it is, is analogous to the art of hearing that's just as complicated and also, I would propose, has three levels. First, the obvious simple hearing is taking a message in, as surely you're doing so well, sitting here, taking it in, and being able to repeat it. But that's not enough. And you know, that's often all we do sometimes in church or with people. And you know, you can hear without ever listening. The second level, the middle ear, I suggest, is the listening level. We not only hear, but we allow that message to really penetrate more deeply by giving it deeper reflection and attention. We not only hear the words, but we're understanding what is said, what's not said, why it's said, and how it's said, and all these things, motivation and inflection, all go into communication and we're picking this up reflectively so that the signal reaches the brain. You know what I'm saying? Listening is a skill that takes time and trouble and talent to develop. It's not enough just to listen. There's a third level. It is the level which Jesus heard and listened and attended to the man who was deaf. It is that level of empathy. When Jesus emphatically listened to this man. He took his pain into his heart. He felt what he was feeling. He thought what he was thinking. He put himself in the man's shoes. And from that level, he emitted a deep, painful groan. That's the kind of hearing that's really healing. And when we experience that with each other, you know you've touched down to the deepest level of intimacy. I dare say many of us do not have that kind of level of listening emphatically to each other very often. Certainly not often enough. Because I would suggest empathy 
requires energy and a capacity for intimacy. And that's not developed overnight. You have to spend time working at hearing, listening, and, and feeding back. Am I hearing you right? Or can you help me with this? Asking clarifying questions, allowing yourself to be challenged and corrected by the speaker or listener. It takes constant work. Most especially, it takes Jesus' effort. We must be opened to the other person. This is where poor communication happens. This is where the real hearing problem happens when the channels of communication between two people break down or become clogged up. And we need to be open to each other. One last reflection on this hearing problem. You know, if you have inner ear problem, it throws you off balance. And you can easily trip and fall. When we're not listening to each other carefully or deeply, we're not really balanced in life. If we're so headstrong and stubborn and we don't listen to one another, we get off kilter. And this is a major problem in life. So the question is, how can we listen better to one another? Even more, how can we have empathy for everybody? I put that question to you today because we are the man who is deaf, and Jesus touches our ears, our hearts, our minds today and says, Ephata, be opened. Amen. Heart to Heart welcomes you back next week for another inspiring edition of Good News Today. If you are interested in other books, CDs, DVDs, or digital downloads by Father Jim or Father Michael, you can call toll-free 1-877-208-4875 or visit our website, www.heartoheart.org. There, you can also sign up to receive a weekly reminder to listen to these same programs online. And please, consider a donation of any size to help support Heart to Heart's radio and internet ministry. That's www.heartoheart.org or call 1-877-208-4875. Thank you for listening and may God bless your heart and the hearts of all of your loved ones. Heart to heart, hand in hand, praying for grace to understand. i